welcome back. Today we have a DIY IKEA hacks video, which I am so pumped for because I have not done one of these in so long. These used to be my favorite videos to film. I still love them, don't get me wrong. I've just been working on so many more room makeovers lately, um, as you guys saw from my breakfast nook and bedroom, and I have another one coming shortly, but I promise those are the last ones for a little bit in my space, but I can't promise you in other people's spaces because I just love doing them. Anyways, today I'm sharing with you guys four DIY IKEA hacks, and these IKEA hacks, three of them are leaning more on the postmodern style, which I've really been loving right now. Definitely more of like an artsy modern feel to them, which I love, and I do have one item that's kind of more rustic, vintage antique which I also love, as you guys know. I just love mixing styles, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of give this one a little bit more of a theme, so I hope that you guys love this. And if you guys would like me to do any IKEA hacks that kind of fit a different interior design theme where I can make sure all projects kind of fit that theme, let me know in the comment section below. And if you see one below that you do like, give it a thumbs up because I will definitely do those for you guys. But we have quite a few DIYs to get through today. So let's go ahead and jump on into our first project. We're gonna be kicking this video off with the most incredible pendant light. This is the one I picked up at Ikea and I did a little sketch on here to kind of create a new shape and I'm gonna be achieving that with some air dry clay. Now I got this one at Michael's. It was like $10 for a five pound tub and that's all I used for this entire project. Well, in terms of the clay. So what I did was I just pulled a little bit off and I started to sculpt these almost trumpet shapes onto the top of the pendant light. So I took it out of the box and made sure that the little orbs were off the end. And then I'm starting to sculpt the clay around Around, and there's no rhyme or reason to this at all. You're just kind of creating little cone shapes on the top where the widest part of the cone is at the bottom. And then it tapers up into almost nothing towards the top there, but we are gonna be adding clay onto the entire light fixture to give it almost this ceramic, like handmade ceramic light fixture effect, which I think is gonna look amazing in the end. So I just tapped that on, added more clay where I felt like I needed it, and just make sure that you're pushing it all the way to the edge. But if you don't get a bit of the edge, you are gonna be spray painting this in the end. So it's gonna cover up any areas you might have missed with the clay. So as you can see here, I added a little bit more clay onto the actual rod itself. I did like a thin layer of this, thick enough to make it look like it could be constructed of ceramic, but also I didn't wanna overwhelm this piece because we are adding quite a bit of weight with the clay. And as you could probably tell, you're gonna repeat the same process to the other two sections as well, just smoothing it out with your finger. That's what I did. I found it to be the easiest was smoothing it out. You can go back in with sandpaper in the end, so it doesn't have to be the most smooth ever. And make sure to also add clay to the center bar section. And you're gonna let this piece dry for about 48 hours. We have quite a bit of clay on those cone sections, so I let them dry for about 48 hours. After 48 hours, you're probably gonna notice a bunch of cracking. This is just such a common thing with air dry clay. It kind of just cracks where the areas are thin, but it's not like the clay is falling off and crumbling off. It is stuck to the rod. It just has a cracked appearance. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that with a little bit of spackle. So I just grabbed some spackle and I'm just gonna be adding this onto the outside just so it visually looks a lot more smooth. And spackle's a lot easier to sand down than dried clay. So this is a great area to add it as well. So you could sand it down in the end for a really smooth finish. I used the 220 grit sandpaper from this pack here and just went around and sanded down the spackle. As you can see, the spackle just comes right off, but you're able to achieve a really smooth finish once you make sure the spackle is fully dried down. I used my heat gun to do that. So I just sanded all those areas where the cracks were to make it nice and smooth. And now comes the fun part, which is painting. So I went in with some tape and taped off all of those sockets there. And then I'm gonna be using this French cream spray paint to achieve more of a ceramic look. But if you guys want like a totally retro, really postmodern look, use like a high gloss and a fun color or an accent color, because I think this light would look incredible in so many different finishes. So I did about three coats of the French cream spray paint to start. Okay. 
And lastly, I use this stone spray paint in the Sienna finish, and you're gonna see some speckles kind of starting to form on the top of what we sprayed the cream color. So I actually stood back about five feet, and I made sure to put up a bunch of plastic, and I sprayed this very randomly just to kind of give it that speckled ceramic look, which I really wanted in the end, and I love the way that it ended up looking. So I removed that tape, and then I popped on the little orbs, which really finished off the light. This is where you could see the full potential of this piece, and I am obsessed with the outcome. our second project, I picked up this brand new vase that Ikea carries. It's a hand-blown vase. It costs $35, but it's really, really large. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but they sell the Zinser Bin Primer in a spray paint form. I just found out about this recently. I've always painted it on everything I've used it for because it works great over glass or any kind of slick surface. Found it in spray paint form, so I let that uh, dry all of the primer. I did just one coat of that. And now what I'm going in and doing is just using some air dry clay once again and and creating some handles. This is actually the excess air dry clay from the project previously. So I wanted to create some like amphora style handles on those amphora jugs. I believe that's what they're called. And I'm just going in, I made them pretty thick and then I made sure to just smooth out the clay to almost make it fade into the glass. And you really wanna press and firmly smooth it out. That way when we go in the paint, which is this step right here, we can paint right over the top. So this is just some household paint. It's the exact same paint I used in my bedroom makeover recently. It's called Lamb's Ear by Valspar and I mixed in a little bit of a red tone because I wanted this to kind of feel a bit like an earthy pink shade and I feel like I was able to achieve that color and then I dumped a whole bunch of baking soda in this. I've been getting a bunch of questions as to why I add baking soda and it's just because it thickens up the paint. It gives it a lot more texture and it also applies really, really nicely but in the end, I'm doing it mainly for the texture that it gives once it dries down. So I'm gonna be painting this piece with a full coat of this paint mixture here. Once that first coat was dried down, I went back in and just kind of created some more texture with the side of the brush, just kind of pouncing it on the surface and creating some more texture. And then I went outside and got some dirt and mixed it with water because we are creating some mud. This is a key to creating like a vintage distressed piece. And guys, this is the one that's not postmodern, by the way, this is the more rustic-y style piece, but I love how this piece turned out. So I use a heat gun for this process. I feel like it really gives you a lot more control in what you're actually creating. So I heat up the dirt and as you can see, you just rub away all of the actual dirt and it leaves behind almost like a dusty, just dingy finish on your piece. It makes this look like a jug that was found a hundred years ago, which I love so much. And this technique is totally customizable. You can go back in and keep on layering up or do like a thin little coat if you just kind of want a bit of a vintage look. But overall, in the end, I made this one super distressed and I loved the way that it ended up turning out. And I'm gonna be styling this one on my mantle. Project number three, I'm using this light from Ikea called Talbin. It is such a cool light. It's very like the it girl lamp that Ikea has. A lot of the like TikTokers have it and it's it's really cute in the end, but I did go ahead and tape off the glass that's on the upper part of the lamp because I do wanna spray paint this entirely with some spray paint. Now I had to use tiny pieces to get around that circle there, but I did manage to tape it off and I also taped off the socket portion, of course. Now this is my first time ever using the bare spray paint, you guys. I'm actually working with them on a project over on Instagram and I bought a bunch of colors just because I wanted to try them out and they're also only $5 a can and this was the best glossy spray paint I've ever used. This one was in the shade Adored Blue and I did really thin coats you guys but when I was done spraying this it literally felt almost like the metal like it felt like it was made 
as metal. Like it didn't even feel like there was spray paint on it. It was so extremely smooth and glossy. I was genuinely shocked. Like look at how pretty that color is and like the sheen that it gives. It is so smooth as well. And it's $5 a can. And also the shade range, like the shade range is really nice because they have all those colors that you can't find, like the muted ones and the moody shades. Like they have such nice colors and I love the color names. This sounds so sponsored. It's not, I promise. I, I really genuinely love it. So I use this quarter inch masking tape that I have. It's copper, but I wanted to add a stripe detail to the bottom there. So I just used one of them as a spacer and kept moving it along and then taping off and leaving that tape in place, of course. So that way when we paint over top, we're revealing a stripe. And I'm just gonna be using some black acrylic paint. And I just went in with a paintbrush and kind of did this by hand. I didn't wanna tape everything off. So I added two coats of that on the bottom there. And then once it was dry, I was able to remove all of our little tape pieces. And this came off so smoothly. It was such a clean finish in the end. And I love how this lamp turned out. And you don't have to add the stripe if you don't want to, but I thought it was a fun touch. is a checkerboard blanket and we're starting off with this Ingrin blanket base which is from Ikea it's about $15 and then I got some printer paper just regular printer paper and I'm cutting it long ways right down the center which is four and a quarter inches that way we're getting the maximum amount of use of our paper so we're gonna get four four and a quarter squared pieces per sheet of paper if that makes sense so I cut a whole bunch of these and I cut mine to four and a quarter by four and a quarter I then went ahead and laid my blanket out and gave it a little ironing and then I started laying down my square shapes. All I'm doing is laying these down in a checkerboard fashion, pretty simple and easy. And if they overlap the edge, I just let them do so. Laid these all out across the entire blanket. So you will need a lot of these or you could, you know, do half of it and then repeat the other half if you don't want to cut too many. But I just cut as many as I could and laid them out across the entire blanket. I then realized since we're gonna be spray painting this, I don't want these flying everywhere. So I actually had this pack of mosaic tiles from a really old Ikea hacks video, the outdoor one I did a while back, and I placed one mosaic tile on every single square just so it gave a bit of weight to the piece because I'm gonna use this color shot by Tulip. I got this at Joann's in the color coffee. And this, you guys, I am freaking obsessed with this product. Look how opaque it goes on, first of all. This is fabric spray paint and it dries down extremely soft. It is not sticky. It is not clumpy. It genuinely feels like the blanket itself. I can't even tell anything's on the blanket and it's fully washable. And something else I love is it can go on top of synthetic fibers because this blanket is made of acrylic. I was able to go right over the top of that. I gave a light misting. This only took me maybe 10 minutes to do. And then I peeled up every single little square piece of paper that we added. Of course, I could reuse those mosaic tiles in the future. And once they were all removed, this was our checkerboarded blanket and you could customize this to whatever color you'd like. I just thought the brown was super cute. Look how soft it is. I wrapped myself up with it and then I tried to do a magic trick which mm, kind of failed, but that's the blanket. And there you go, my friends. Those were my four DIY IKEA hacks that lean a little bit more postmodern in that one that's just kind of vintagey. But if you wanted to, you could totally make that postmodern as well. Maybe spray it with like a high gloss spray paint and utilize it as a nice vase in a bookshelf or on your mantle or something. Just an idea, but I hope that you guys did enjoy those. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comment section below. And I actually have an entire playlist of IKEA hacks because I have done so many of them. This project right here actually is an IKEA hack, believe it or not, and it's probably Probably one of my favorite ones I've ever done. I'll link that video below. It's its own separate video because that one needed its own video, you know? If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And you can also follow me over on TikTok and Instagram, both of which is Lone Fox Home. I share so much more content outside of my YouTube channel on those two platforms. So I highly suggest checking it out. And you can also shop my online home decor store. It is lonefox.com. I'll link it below for you guys. But I'll catch you in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Everybody.